million dollars with six million dollars dedicated for gender-based violence. Uh, this appeal was complemented by a surf allocation where the resident coordinator, who is also our humanitarian coordinator in the Philippines, declared that 30%, 30% of the allocation must be dedicated to protection with prioritization for GPV. The decision to ensure an earmarked envelope for protection was taken uh, at the country level with the humanitarian country team and was not a HQ level directive as we saw from the COVID-19 allocations for GBV. And for this reason, the Philippines uh, stand out and may offer us lessons, you know, lessons learned on how uh, senior leadership can make protection central to a natural disaster response from the start. So we will share with you in the chat box in a bit no? uh, the uh, humanitarian needs and priorities video from our resident coordinator and the humanitarian coordinator as well. So that's a brief overview of the crisis. And I will now turn you over to Dr. Leila Judan for her sharing on interagency leadership. Over to you, Dr. Leila. Thank you, Rio. Good morning and good evening, colleagues. It's a really a honor and great pleasure to be with you today. And I would like uh, to thank uh, the GBV Global and Regional AOR colleagues who organized this call and provided the opportunity for the team here in the Philippines to share with you uh, the concerning situation that the population is uh, facing, and in particular, women and girls uh, affected by the super typhoon uh, Odette. Uh, my colleague Rio has uh, given you a brief overview of uh, the scale of the crisis and uh, the humanitarian needs and priorities. But uh, from my point of view, I would like to focus on three key points. One, the importance of advocacy for the inclusion of the GBV in the UN appeals. Two, is the achievements and challenges for the UN uh, uh, responding to GBV. And three, few lessons learned on how the UN can better support government-led GBV subclusters and the response across the development humanitarian nexus. So let me start, you know, as of the head of the UN cluster uh, lead agency on GBV, uh, advocating to ensure uh, that GBV was prioritized as part of the UN appeals and planning from uh, the beginning of the response is, is uh, absolutely crucial. We know that uh, GBV is uh, pre-existing with uh, NDHS data, uh, showing high prevalence of GBV in the affected areas with 35% and 25% in Karaga region and Southern Lake, respectively. Therefore, it is expected that uh, uh, there will be an increase of GBV in the affected areas, of course. Um, so preparedness was definitely a major factor in the inclusion of the GBV in the UN appeals. Uh, as you all know, the Philippines ranks as the third most disaster prone country in the world. The Philippines, uh, we faced, uh, you know, uh, yeah, uh, an average of 20 typhoons in the, uh, you know, uh, uh, each year. So in this regard, and prior to the typhoon, the GBV subcluster developed the GBV subcluster strategy and work plan to better prepare for disasters. And uh, this was uh, made possible uh, through the support of the Rega team. And I would like uh, really to uh, uh, thank our uh, colleagues from the Rega team who supported uh, you know, the GBV sub, uh, subcluster here in the Philippines to develop uh, our uh, strategy and work plan. Uh, and it was done in close partnership with the government with uh, INGOs, CSO members of the subcluster. It's a very uh, important to uh, uh, you know, highlight this, but uh, the, sub, uh, the GPV subcluster is uh, co-led co -led by uh, UNFPA and our governmental counterpart, DSWD. And it, uh, um, 
it, uh, we regularly meet uh, even prior to the typhoon, and this is why we developed our strategy and work plan. Uh, but help us, helped us uh, at the onset of the typhoon to successfully advocate for a dedicated budget for protect, uh, protection GBV. This was possible primarily because of the following ac key action and intervention. One, awareness of an engagement of the UN humanitarian country team in the development and enhancement of the GBV subcluster strategy. It is good to note that the GBV subcluster has the only body that has a strategy among the different clusters. So uh, this is the first, uh, you know, key actions that uh, allowed us to uh, advocate uh, successfully uh, for uh, uh, to dedicate a budget uh, uh, in the beginning of uh, the uh, response. The second point is that UNFPA as a co-lead of the GBV subcluster with our governmental counterpart, the SWT, provided data and evidence to support planning for the response. Example, uh, the, uh, highlighting the relevant pre-disaster data on GBV in the affected areas, as I said uh, before, uh, underscoring uh, that cases of GBV increases in the context of emergencies, among other evidences uh, that was shared with the HCT members. Three is the strong coordination and working the relationship with UNHCR, UNICEF on protection issues, which added a strong voice at the humanitarian country team. So through this advocacy, we were able to integrate GBV among the priorities selected for funding. And as we continuously respond to GBV, we have several achievements to date, but also note some challenges that the UN and its partners continues to face in response to large scale natural disasters. So let me share with you um, three key accomplishments to date. One, at the UN level, UNRCs uh, advocated for a 30% allocation to address protection issues on major uh, resource mobilization efforts. Uh, as uh, uh, you, know, uh, you know, we uh, were uh, uh, um, successfully to uh, raise, uh, you know, uh, uh, 2.5 million, for example, from CERB. And uh, because also of uh, the strong, uh, you know, uh, RC uh, position to uh, uh, allocate 30 percent of uh, uh, this uh, budget to uh, uh, the, uh, to address protection issues and GBP uh, uh, issues. Two is a notable strong leadership of a government in the GBV response. And we have active uh, GBV subcluster members uh, uh, like uh, uh, INGOs and CSOs at the national, but also at the regional level, which led to the third point that I want uh, uh, to share with you as an accomplishment, which is uh, the immediate reactivation of the regional GBV coordination mechanism, maximizing the existing protection mechanisms, such as the Regional Interagency Council Against uh, uh, Trafficking and Violence Against Women and Children. But uh, as with uh, most large uh, uh, scale natural disaster, we have also encountered uh, several challenges. And notably, this include one, uh, GPV issues uh, remain largely unseen or not prioritized by uh, different humanitarian actors. This is why we need to continue this advocacy uh, uh, as a, you know, uh, a, subclass, a GBV subcluster. Two is uh, the insufficient uh, funding to fully cover the GBV needs and priorities. Of the 6 million appeal, we have only, uh, uh, we were only successful to uh, mobilize 2.5 million that has been provided to date. Three is uh, an even capacity of service providers in different regions uh, and uh, on addressing GBV issues and on coordinating GBV services provision. Uh, 
Four is uh, the unavailability of sex age disability data remains a major concern, uh, which limits uh, different humanitarian actors uh, from seeing the unique needs of women, girls, and other vulnerable groups during the emergencies. While uh, this is currently being addressed through the development of an information management for the response cluster, this initiative, however, is still limited to the Karaga region, and we need uh, to uh, put more uh, uh, efforts to ensure that uh, other regions will benefit from uh, the same uh, support and uh, to develop uh, uh, the information management for response uh, uh, in the other uh, region as well. So uh, with these achievements and challenges, we have also noted the key lessons learned on how the UN can better support government-led uh, GBV subclusters in, and the response in development and humanitarian nexus. Crucial is the continuous provision of technical assistance to government on the different aspects of GBV coordination work including among others on how to reactivate and strengthen the subcluster, capacitating government counterparts on the different GBV assessment tools, facilitating the engagement of different uh, actors on the, in the subcluster, the INGOs, CSOs, women-led uh, organization, and providing information management support, as I said. Uh, investment to the work of GBV coordination is, uh, is uh, vital. Both human resources and funding, especially when national strategies are cascaded and rolled out at the regional level. Most importantly is uh, the strong uh, relationship with UN, uh, of UNFPA in particular as a subcluster lead with uh, the Department of Social Welfare and Development, different UN agencies, NGOs, and CSOs facilitated the immediate reactivation of the GBV subcluster and the prioritization of GBV in the HNP and funding apex. So last but not least, I would like to share with you that after more than one month after the typhoon, uh, the following key immediate needs specific to GBV as stated in the recently developed consolidated assessment. For one is the emergency hiring of human resources for health and GBV services for integrated life-saving health and protection services, and the provision of the personal protective equipment given uh, the rising uh, cases of COVID-19. Indeed, it's uh, really a crisis within the crisis. We are now facing, uh, you know, the new COVID, uh, a new COVID surge, which uh, affects, uh, you know, the uh, service providers, and uh, we need uh, to be capable to augment and to hire uh, the necessary human resources uh, to provide, uh, you know, the, uh, an integrated life-saving health and protection services, and uh, of course provide them with the PPEs as well. Two is the capacity building of the service providers and volunteer uh, women's friendly space uh, facilitators on survivor centered approach to addressing the gender based violence and on provision of mental health and psychosocial support services to affected communities. This is very important but because uh, we uh, you know, have volunteers and we need to build their capacity uh, on uh, the survivor-centered approach to address uh, uh, addressing GBV. Three is uh, to repair uh, of uh, the infrastructure and the provision of equipment to enable health and protection facilities, such as uh, the women and children uh, protection unit in hospital to provide comprehensive SRH and GBV services. This is really very important because of, uh, you know, the huge damage that affected uh, uh, the facilities, you know, uh, in uh, all these regions, we need to be capable to re repair uh, this infrastructure so that uh, there is a continuity uh, of uh, the provision uh, uh, of uh, the services. 
and that's uh, for uh, uh, the reactivation of the local protection mechanisms and update and dissemination of the referral pathways. This is, uh, is uh, uh, we started uh, this in Caraga and we will continue the support and we need to strengthen you know, uh, uh, this uh, mechanism and uh, the referral pathway as well. Uh, so based on this situation, uh, you know, because one month after uh, the, uh, uh, the typhoon, uh, the uh, population affected in uh, the, may, uh, the many regions are still facing a really huge, you know, uh, uh, needs and uh, uh, still they are, uh, you know, uh, um, in need of uh, uh, service provisions and life-saving provisions. Uh, today, uh, the HCT, uh, we met uh, again and we agreed uh, that uh, there is a very urgent uh, need to recalibrate the HNP and launch uh, a new call for support. Uh, so this is exactly what we will, uh, we, uh, it will, uh, you know, uh, be done uh, uh, by uh, early next uh, week, uh, we already, uh, you know, uh, revised our uh, need assessment and uh, uh, the new appeal uh, will be launched by the, uh, by the resident coordinator and the government of the Philippines. So let me stop here. And of course, I will be happy to take any question later. Uh, thank you so much for your attention. And uh, let me uh, give the floor to our colleague uh, from uh, uh, the Regional Office of Social Welfare, uh, Ms. Catherine Aranas. Uh, over to you, Catherine. Yes, hello, good evening and good afternoon, everyone. So I am Jesse Catherine B. Aranas the Social Welfare Officer 5 of the Department of Social Welfare and Development Caraga Region, and also the IDP Protection Focal of our office. I will be providing you the updates in the context of the gender-based violence or GBV response as a result of the assessments made by our office and also with our partners for the past month in heavily devastated areas, particularly in Surigao del Norte and in province of uh, Dinagat Islands. So my presentation is limited only on the areas under our jurisdiction and may be different from other regions affected by ODET. So after the onset of ODET, what has been the response of the IDP protection cluster for Calanti? So I would like to inform everyone that in the Philippine context, so we utilize the cluster system approach. So cluster system means uh, it is uh, ensuring that there is a more coherent and effective response by mobilizing our government agencies, our partners, uh, like the IOs, the international organizations, the other NGOs, to respond in a strategic manner across all key sectors with clearly designated lead agencies. So this was adopted already in the country in 2007. And uh, this is led by the, by the national government agencies as the cluster lead, while agencies in the humanitarian country team are the co-leads. So the Department of Social Welfare Development is the vice chair of the Re disaster response, which also has 11 subclusters, of which the IDP protection is one of those clusters, which also has two subclusters, this gender-based violence and the child protection subcluster. So for the IDP, we have these major achievements to date. We have the immediate conduct of our tri-cluster rapid assessments. This is along with the camp coordination, camp management, the food and non-food items, and the IDP protection, our protection. And then we also activated the Regional Interagency Council Against Trafficking and Violence Against Women and Their Children. And also we have the Regional Child Protection Working Group, which is the subcommittee under the Regional Committee for the Welfare of Children, which are already the ex pre-existing protection mechanisms at the regional level. And also we have released advisories and hotlines to address the various emerging issues, including the GBV, to answer observations on children and women begging for food and asking for money. So this could be potential GBV situations. Fourth, we also have progressive or regular GBV or child protection coordination meetings. And we also adopted policy in harmonizing the response cluster report templates. And also we have continuous conduct of, of psychosocial support to IDPs and sharing of our life-saving messages on the GBV and prevention on sexual abuse and exploitation to communities. Next, please. 
So far, based on our assessments conducted for the few weeks, these are the considered pressing needs that should be answered immediately. So number one is to conduct of GBV risk mitigation activities in our existing evacuation centers and even to the returned communities or home-based IDPs. The second is uh, to expand reach of our psychological first aid and mental health and psychosocial support, complementing other agencies and other clusters. The third would be on the immediate reactivation of our local protection mechanisms and updating and dissemination of, of our referral pathways where IDPs can of course have clear contact on where to seek help or assistance if needed. And then the fourth would, would be on the conduct of capacity building be on mentoring or coaching with our service providers and our local women friendly space facilitators on survivor centered approach to address the GBV and the last would be on the repair and resource augmentation for our women and children protection units for the continuous provision of comprehensive GBV services, including the clinical management of rape and of course, with the intimate partner violence. So in summary, next please. These are the key highlights of our IDP protection cluster in Caraga region, particularly on the gender-based violence. So we leverage on the existing local protection mechanisms from the regional level, but of course this would follow the cascading on the local levels or to the local levels. The second is uh, we highlighted the GBV issues right from the start of the operation. So this was very helpful to us so as to determine what, what could be the GBV uh, issues that need to be addressed too. And then the third is we ensure the inclusion of our GBV and child protection assessments and reports in the regional coordination meetings highlighting the action areas also of other clusters. So on the other hand, next please. These are the challenges that we also have to consider in our IDP protection response plan. Number one is the introduction of our non-traditional mechanisms on the conduct of the capacity building while COVID cases has to be considered also. So the challenge would be on the retention on the knowledge of our participants, especially that there are areas which have intermittent signals. The second would be on the intensive monitoring of our GBV cases and ensuring the comprehensive package of services of the local government units where budget will of course be most likely be focused on relief assistance. The third would be, uh, this would also be a challenge for us to ensure the protection of our team who will be providing IDP support while at risk of acquiring the COVID-19, hence the question of the continuity of our services or to cover relief assistance or to cover other assistance and interventions to the IDPs. And the fourth one is our challenge on the full activation of our local committees in how to sustain the focus of our frontliners in the areas affected who are also victims of typhoon because they are also drained or exhausted on the relief operation activities. Hence, there is a need for continuous technical assistance also from the regional committees and also with our partners from the international organizations and from the other NGOs as well. We understand, however, that these are still works in progress, but also need collaboration and coordination with the different agencies and other partners so as to fully respond to the pressing needs of the IDPs, not only in protection, but other clusters as well. So I think that would be the updates of our IDP protection cluster in Caraga region. Thank you very much. Great, thank you, um, Cassie. That was very comprehensive and, and very informative. Um, so now we're going to hand over the floor and actually just before I hand the floor to our next speaker, um, just to remind everyone that there will be time for questions and answers. So please um, write your question in the chat so you don't forget it. Uh, I know each, each speaker is going to raise a different set of questions for you, so feel free to put them in the chat and then we'll come to them at the very end after we've heard from all of our speakers. So our next speaker is Ms. Jean Enriquez, who is um, from the, uh, the, or the organization that is working against trafficking in women in the Asia Pacific. Um, and you can see there, it's, the co it's a coalition. And uh, she's part of the very strong civil society uh, that works in the Philippines, which 
I have at least been in touch with a number of very impressive women-led organizations from the Philippines. So um, it's exciting to have uh, Tina Nvikis, who's the executive director uh, on this call to give us uh, a voice of some of the civil society organizations. So over to you, um, Jean. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Good evening, everyone from the Philippines. Our deep thanks to UNFPA and the Global Gender-Based Violence Area of Responsibility for inviting us to share in this very important meeting. This first slide was from Bohol, a province severely affected by the typhoon and the single women heads of families allowed us to share this photo of them. Um, next slide, please. Let me first share briefly on how local NGOs, especially women-focused NGOs, are mobilizing and participating in the GBV coordination and interventions in this typhoon response. Local NGOs, especially women-focused NGOs that have partner national organizations such as the Coalition Against Trafficking in Women, Asia Pacific, and the PKKK, or the National Coalition of Rural Women, have been participating in the GBV subcluster meetings before and after Typhoon Rai or ODEP. We were also directly coordinating with local so social welfare department partners, women and youth groups and other civil society groups and social movements, including labor, before, uh, before Typhoon for preparations in evacuation and mobilization of relief during and after the Typhoon. CATWAP started providing humanitarian assistance by morning of December 18, 2021, considering the vulnerabilities and risks of women and girls, including survivors of GBV, in the immediate aftermath of the typhoon. Beneficiaries were women, youth, and their families in the provinces of Binagat Islands, Surigao del Norte, Surigao del Sur, Negros Occidental, Bohol, Samar, Eastern Samar, Leyte, Southern Leyte, Cebu City, and Palawan. Next slide, please. There are specific risks and concerns for trafficking of women and girls in this response. Immediately after the onslaught of the typhoon, our survivor leaders contacted GBV survivors who are in our network in the affected areas. Survivors of sexual exploitation and trafficking reported that their houses were inundated in Cagayan de Oro while GBV survivors assisted in above-mentioned provinces lost their homes and their families' livelihood. Sources of food and means of food production, such as rice meals, were also damaged. Thus, women and youth we assisted had to travel far to access rice in the early days of the typhoon aftermath. All these put them at risk of abuse and real victimization in trafficking. Next slide, please. These photos were from our partner youth and local women's groups in Negros Occidental and Palawan, respectively, with their, uh, given with their full informed consent. Next slide, please. Having been victimized in trafficking and sexual exploitation before, not a few of them were enticed to the sex industry as they, be they became anxious of the future of their families, while at the same time, some of their children became sick and had to be hospitalized. Being connected to survivor leaders in our UNFPA-supported online support groups for survivors of online sexual exploitation and abuse, the women and girls were assisted by CATWAP together with our network of survivor leaders, local social welfare departments, partner women, youth, and other CSOs. Uh, they were immediately assisted and uh, through integration into cash programming, healing, and psychosocial support activities. Therefore, their victimization in trafficking was averted. We can only imagine how many more who are yet beyond our reach could have been re-victimized back to sexual exploitation. Next slide, please. The areas affected by Typhoon Rai were historical hotspots of trafficking when overlaying the map of affected areas from the National Disaster Risk Reduction Management and the U.S. Trafficking in Persons Report of 2020. Thus, it is important to make visible other areas severely affected by Typhoon Odep. Next slide, please. What makes this response similar or different from others, such as the post haiyan response? 
Among best practices in post-Haiyan response was the setting up of women-friendly spaces or WFS. Civil society organizations, including CATWAP, were also part of the setting up of the GBV watch groups in evacuation camps. Where CATWAP was assigned, which was in Tacloban Leyte, quantifiable decrease in the incidence of intimate partner violence was documented. In many areas, the GBV watch groups were integrated in the barangay or village level government structures. In Roja City, the project received an award on gender responsiveness from the local government. Barangay or village level authorities in Eastern Samar also issued ordinances declaring the areas zero trafficking through activation of barangay violence against women desks, community education, and application of the anti-trafficking law in case of red flags or proven incidents of trafficking. Next slide, please. Here is a photo of our GBV watch group members in Tacloban Leyte holding lamps and arnis sticks. They had a training on indigenous self-defense called arnis, which gave them confidence in their own bodies and their own spaces. They were trained on women's rights laws, gender sensitivity, and gender responsiveness. Next slide, please. Among promising practices in post death response is the integration of at-risk groups of women and girls into cash for protection programming, including survivors of GBV, pregnant women, persons with disability, and adolescent mothers. The survivors have been de deeply thankful that GBV was mitigated by the immediate response of CATWAP with the help of UNFPA. Provision of replacement for computers of the local police by UNFPA is necessary in ensuring continuity in legal services for cases of GBV that authorities need to respond to. And CATWAP, together with UNFPA, intend to support with cash for protection. Finally, life-saving mes messages on prevention and response to GBV, including trafficking and sexual violence, will be transmitted through community radio. The fact that affected areas are tourism areas makes these activities very necessary. Finally, the women survivors and CATWAP cannot express our gratefulness enough for this sensitive support by UNFPA to our responses on the ground that saved lives of many women, young people, and their families. Thank you and good evening from the Philippines. Thank you so much. Um, I think that those have been great presentations and, and I think we've really gotten a good overview from what's been the process at the national level with the government, with the resident coordinator, double heading SHC, um, and, and the, the um, initiatives around fundraising, as well as the government's response um, at, the, at the specific location where the, the population was affected, although I also heard that you haven't been able to reach all of the affected population. And then some really exciting and innovative initiatives, some learned as good practices from the last uh, huge hurricane or typhoon that, that many, I think even on this call, might have um, been at in the Philippines, um, as well as the new challenges brought on by COVID on top of all of this um, and, and how that has meant needing to work in new ways. So, um, Lee Ashley, I don't know if there's any questions in the chat that you wanted to raise or if we open the floor, open the Zoom. <laughs> yes, open the Zoom. We have no questions yet, uh, but we can stir up and provoke the group if needed. <laughs> okay, Back so why don't we see if anyone, you can raise your hand or if you want, I mean, there's few of us on this call, like I said, this was not open to our whole list serve. This was open to our core members and um, some of our other stakeholders from the donor state group. Um, so if you want to even make a comment um, or raise a question, even based on what you're hearing from your own teams that are, that are working in the area, um, please feel free to just um, unmute your mic. I think people are able to unmute their mics, right, Vivian? Yes, they are. Okay, just make sure I'm not telling you to unmute your mic and then you have no control of your mic. So 
that's happened. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know if there's any questions or comments. We, we have about, I think, 10 more minutes. So um, yeah, please. Hi, this is uh, this is Jess Skinner from from FCDO from the UK's FCDO. Um, thank you so much for the presentation. I I'm, I'm really excited by the successes that you've had, and yeah, I'm kind of keen definitely to to learn more and um, share this recording maybe if that's possible um, in the future or, or any documentation on on that. I, I had a specific question and you might have mentioned it at the beginning, but I, I had to join a few minutes late. Um, you mentioned that 30% of the appeal had been um, set aside for protection, including GBV. Um, and I was wondering how that actually translated into funding uh, for the GBV sector. Um, and if you still saw um, a, a proportionate, and I know that the whole the whole appeal was not fully funded. Um, but did were you able to actually see uh, a similar level or proportion of funding for the GBV sector as for other sectors? Thanks so much. Do you want to take that one, Leila? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, uh just for this uh, question uh so yeah uh, absolutely as you said huh, uh, the whole appeal you know uh, we uh, was uh, 107 million and uh, we only uh, you know were uh, successful to uh, um, to receive uh, you know for uh, the uh, uh from the surf uh, uh 12 uh, uh, a million um, so for the GBV, uh, for the protection, it was really the thirty percent dedicated for protection was mainly dedicated for uh, GBV, uh, and uh, we received two point five million uh, from uh, this uh, twelve million. Uh, of course, uh, you know uh, we are far from uh, the uh, to cover uh, the entire uh, you know needs uh, we. Uh, in the beginning uh, of this appeal, uh, we were uh, we. Uh... Uh, uh, you know, uh, budgeted uh, the needs for 12 million, and we only rece uh, received uh, uh, 2.5 million. Uh, the 12 million covered the GBV and SRA, so for the GBV specifically, it was uh, 6 million. So, as you can see, we uh, were successful to, uh, 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 you know, have 30% uh, of uh, the budget for uh, GBV, uh, but uh, still, uh, uh, we have a huge, uh, you know, gap in uh, the funding. Uh, and now, uh, one month after, uh, we know that uh, the, the needs are uh, even more uh, because, uh, you know, the um, uh, people are uh, now uh, coming back uh, to their, uh, you know, uh, very isolated, uh, you know, islands. Uh, to, uh, you know, uh, repair uh, the damage for their houses, so which uh, make uh, the response more uh, difficult even. And uh, to ne we need to be more innovative uh, to uh, ensure that uh, uh, the services are uh, provided uh, even uh, for these uh, people and uh, women that are uh, in a very isolated area. Yeah, back to you, Jennifer. Great, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, and I think, you know, one of the reasons that we wanted to have um, Leila on this call was because, you know, we've really, I think in advocacy, um, seen that when there is strong leadership at the beginning um, of an emergency, uh, pushing, doing advocacy to get the funding that's needed for GBV, it makes a huge difference. And so we felt like this is a, an example where um, a lot of the different elements that we're often advocating for in terms of supporting the government in natural disasters, in terms of working, supporting, looking at how we can support uh, the local organizations that are on the ground. And, and I think one of the things that Leila pointed out that has, has been um, a, success, a success in the preparedness work is that 
you know, it wasn't like waiting till the beginning of the emergency and then going and advocating at the table. It was all the work that's been going on ahead of time because it is cyclical to have typhoons. And, and so that preparedness is really what enabled um, the, the GBV response to take place right from the beginning. And I would guess that it's also the advocacy work that's done in the UCT, the UNCT to even be aware of GBV needs before the disaster hits. And so I, I think there's a lot of good lessons that we can draw from this experience um, in the Philippines. And, and I think also the creativity of dealing with COVID at the same time in terms of having the, the hotline support as well as the, the watch group. Um, I noticed that there's a number of people from USAID on the call, and I know some of you are from the region. I don't know if you wanna make any comments or if you have been interacting with actors from other regions um, in the Philippines and wanna raise any of their concerns or, or could provide any update from your side. I think Laura is on the call. I think this is your region. Yep. Hi, everybody. Uh, this is Lara. I am a protection advisor with USAID's Bureau for Humanitarian Assistance. Um, I do have other colleagues on the call who um, are focused on the region, and I definitely welcome their input. Um, I, I really appreciate these presentations, um, and I also really appreciate your response to uh, Jess's question on funding, which was also my question, so thank you for anticipating that. Um, I do have, I have, I would love to know, I have a question more on a technical side, but again, I welcome my other colleagues if they have other things they want to add. Um, uh, Ms. Barana has mentioned that um, COVID-19, like concerns and restrictions are impacting capacity building activities. And it would be great to hear from the speakers um, a little bit more on that and how their teams are approaching uh, supporting their staff in this context and what, what's working and how they're overcoming uh, these barriers. Um, so that's one question from my side, but again, any other colleagues on my end, obviously feel free to jump in and thank you again, everybody. Okay. So, okay, and I answer. So thank you, uh, Ms. Lara, on that question. Actually, on the context of uh, the DSWD, we have conducted capacity building, also mentoring and coaching, but it's through hybrid session. Meaning to say we, we do face-to-face, -face, but on limited uh, people only, but uh, this is also part of the challenges that I have shared a while ago that it's because of the hybrid session, we couldn't be able to uh, sustain the retention or uh, the focus of our, uh, of our participants and also one of the challenges here is on the context of the intermittent con connection also so this is one of the challenges that we will be uh, looking forward or will be considering uh, for us to have our response plan uh, to be able to answer uh, the needs of our IDPs. May I add uh, something here? Yeah. Of course. Uh, Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, uh, no, Lara, it's very important. And as I, uh, we both said, uh, Catherine and uh, myself, uh, COVID really added the burden, uh, and uh, it's a crisis within a crisis. Uh, so uh, exactly, we noticed that uh, we have, uh, you know, many uh, um, COVID uh, uh, cases among of, uh, uh, service providers. And uh, what we did as UNFPA, we were able also to uh, uh, mobilize our, uh, you know, emergency fund, UNFPA emergency fund, from your UNFPA emergency fund, uh, to uh, mobilize uh, the, our uh, uh, surge, you know, colleagues, and uh, they, uh, uh, you know, we have uh, to augment uh, the capacities of response in uh, uh, at local level. So we uh, we have uh, people coming on board, uh, and uh, we are also augmenting. Uh, you know, we are su in support to augmenting uh, the number of uh, uh, service providers, and uh, this is why we said that uh, 
it's uh, very important uh, to take into account uh, these uh, new emerging issues uh, that was not uh, in uh, the first, uh, you know, appeal, and that uh, we need to find, uh, you know, uh, the necessary uh, um, uh, resources uh, to augment, uh, you know, the capacities uh, uh, to respond to the GBV and also for us uh, to SRH as well, because people are sick and uh, we need to hire uh, more people uh, uh, to uh, respond. Huh? So this is very important. And we started doing this. Uh, we uh, mobilized uh, colleagues uh, from the regional office, but from the, our search uh, to come in. Uh, plus, uh, we are hiring also uh, uh, um, local uh, 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 you know, uh, staff uh, to support uh, our colleagues in uh, the ground. One other very important uh, point is uh, the solid solidarity between the regions. We saw that, uh, for example, uh, uh, in uh, South Lake, uh, we have uh, Eastern Summer that uh, deployed, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, teams from Eastern Summer uh, to, uh, they deployed it to, to uh, South Lake to support, uh, you know, uh, the response there. So there is solidarity between regions. Uh, uh, the governors uh, very quickly uh, accepted uh, to support uh, other regions. And this is also another lesson learned. Uh, uh, that uh, uh, we can, uh, you know, uh, 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 show as uh, uh, good practices. Uh, yeah, thank you. Back to you. Thank you. And I see that, Tony, you have your hand up. Do you want to ask a question or make a comment? Yes, thanks, Jennifer. I do have a question. Thanks so much to the presenters. It's great to see and to hear. Um, the different ways that senior leadership has supported the prioritization um, and supporting the needs for the GBV response. Um, and what I wanted to highlight, or really just to ask, is there any forecast in the updated RP, which will have the new needs assessment where we'll see that continued prioritization for GBV? Has there been discussions around that in the planning? for the new, um, the new needs assessment? And is there any support that um, we as, um, as, as advocacy can provide in that? Thank you. Tony, do you wanna introduce yourself so that people know? <laughs> Ooh, yes, and... sorry. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Tony Stewart I'm from OCHA, the gender unit. I work closely with the senior gender advisor, April Pham. She sends her apologies, she couldn't be here today. Thank you. And, and uh, just so you know, the, the gender unit has one of their three um, priorities on related to GBV, or the, sorry, it's the new policy of, of OCHA, I guess, around gender. So um, strong advocates, but just to give you that she, she's coming from the gender perspective as well as GBV. Great, so who wants to respond? Yeah, perhaps I can start and after, uh, uh, yeah, I can ask uh, Catherine if uh, she wants to, uh, you know, uh, add. But uh, yeah, Tony, uh, as uh, I said, you know, we just uh, uh, discussed, uh, you know, the new, uh, the, yeah, the, the, the need assessment that uh, was uh, updated uh, recently. And uh, based on this uh, need assessment, uh, we were able uh, to show that, uh, the, uh, you know, uh, from the GBV subcluster, the huge uh, uh, needs. Uh, uh, and uh, we were also successful today, you know, we uh, uh, presented uh, to the HCT uh, the new priorities and uh, uh, they, um, you know, all accepted that uh, uh, the GBV and the protection and uh, with the GBV uh, uh, um, included uh, is, one, uh, is one of the priorities selected uh, for the new appeal as well. So uh, uh, there is uh, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the HCT is conscious about uh, the, the need uh, to uh, uh, ensure that the GBV response is among the priority. Uh, but and uh, we know that uh, there is, uh, you know, a lot of. Uh, 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 um, over competing uh, priorities, but uh, the GBV will be one of, uh, you know, uh, the selected area uh, for the next appeal as well. Uh, so here, uh, yeah, I'm uh, I really uh, um, 
uh, thankful to the colleagues of OCHA who uh, uh, really coordinated very well, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the response uh, in, in the Philippines. And uh, they were uh, able also to ensure that uh, all the priorities uh, are, uh, you know, well represented and the GBV response was uh, uh, among uh, these uh, priorities. Yeah. I don't know if other colleagues want to add anything huh, from the Philippines. Please feel free. No. Okay. I wanted. I did want to raise because we have some child protection actors on this call as well, and I think the Philippines um, has also a tradition or or a history of having child protection and GBV, um, even I know in Mindanao, they had a working group where you looked at both issues together. So I'm just wondering if there's anything um, that you wanna say around adolescent girls and you know, do they have special needs? Are, are, are their needs being looked out for and prioritized as one of your target groups? Um, and maybe, maybe this would go a, a question to, to, either, to either Kathy or to Jean. Yes, uh, thank you, Miss Jennifer. So actually for the adolescent uh, or teenage, teenagers years, we, al we also have noticed based on our assessments and visits in the areas. So we have uh, assessed or we have observed that there are teenagers who are frequently visiting uh, charging stations because there are only limited uh, electricity in some areas. So there are charging stations or mobile uh, places, which all, all have uh, mobile signals where these girls are frequently visiting. So this is one of our uh, potential GBV cases or child protection issues that we need to be at, uh, we need to attend to. So uh, this was already discussed based on our previous uh, meetings. And then we, we are also monitoring uh, cases of GBV and uh, sexual abuse cases, particularly in Siargao and province of Dinagat Islands. And another uh, case has to be validated also in uh, San Benito, Surigao del Norte or in Siargao Island. So these are something that has to be uh, attended to or to be validated by the team. And uh, we need also to provide activities, especially in the psychoeducation for the parents who are leaving their children in the evacuation centers. So these are points to be considered also of the team and not only with the gender-based violence, but also with our uh, child protection partners also. Thank you so much. Jean, did you have anything you wanted to add? Um, I'm good. Thank you, uh, Jennifer. Okay. I think I mentioned uh, several during my presentation. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So um, I'm aware of the time and I know people have other meetings that they need to go to, but is there any last burning thing that you're like, oh, I forgot to say that, or I forgot to add that just to give anyone a, a chance or any burning last, last question that you want to ask before we all hang up? Okay, so I want to thank everyone for coming. I'm, I'm not going to go through a whole summary because I, I wanted to give that extra time for questions and answers. But I think that all of the presenters would be happy to um, respond in any sort of bilateral questions that you might have. You can write to us for their contact information. And I mean, I'm excited about all of the lessons that we're hearing that I think ideas that could be applicable also in, in other locations, especially around the preparedness. And I think it's really such a, um, a tribute to the hard work in the Philippines that there are less fatalities this time, even though more people from the population were affected and there's huge issues around housing. And I, I hope the shelter cluster is, is helping. And I think this is an opportunity for us to also be talking to the shelter cluster to make sure they have women and girls needs um, taken into account as they build back. So if you need support from our side on that, let us know. Um, and we have lots of operational partners on this call. So um, please, you know, when there's uh, still areas that need to be addressed and Lee Ashley has put up um, the key messages on the last slide. So, so um, Jessica, in, in response to your question, uh, we can share the, the recording of, of this call so that if people missed it, 
Um, and definitely the PowerPoint we will include um, in a monthly update. But please do get in touch with us if you wanna to speak to any of the presenters individually. And um, you know maybe we can come back to one of our monthly calls in the future and get an update on, on how it's moving forward. Um, and, and really exciting to hear from both the government and uh, the women-led organization. And I'm sure we would hear very interesting stories from some of the other voices from the field as well. So, so thank you for giving us um, a photograph of that. And, and I, I think what I wanna say is we're so excited by the achievements that you mentioned, but we don't want everyone to go away feeling warm and fuzzy and like, now we don't need to worry about the Philippines. You know, it was it was bad timing right before the holidays, and it very quickly falls off the media. So, so please do remember the Philippines, and and please do recognize that there's a lot of unmet needs that I think Layla pointed out with the the funding is is it's great that GBV was prioritized, but they still need additional resources to meet all of the needs. Needs. Um, and it sounds like the infrastructure is there to make that happen. And so more funding would be very welcome. So thank you, everyone. And uh, yeah, it was great to have all of you on this call. And thank you for taking the time in your schedule. Thank you so much. So bye, everyone. <laughs> bye. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks a lot, much. all of you, really. We'll be in touch. Yeah. And, uh, so and definitely much. anyone who comes to us, we'll we'll put them in touch with you directly.